Welcome to Untold Physio Stories, a podcast that informs and educates by connecting you to rehab industry leaders who share their candid successes and failures in business and practice. This episode of Untold Physio Stories is sponsored by Edge Mobility System. Edge Mobility System is your online site for everything a PT, OT, DC, MT, ATC, or fitness pro would need. Get certified in blood flow restriction therapy or training online. Check out our full modern manual therapy seminars, ISTM toolkit, edge suspension trainer, portable tables, and more. Untold Physio Stories listeners can save 10% by going to edgemobsys.com. That's E-D-G-E-M-O-B-S-Y-S dot com slash untold to save 10% off their first purchase. Edge Health and Tech Solutions. We do websites that work for you and give you an edge over the competition. Did you know that you have less than 10 seconds to capture someone's interest in your website before they click away? How about the fact that most people are accessing your website from their phone? Save thousands and get a fully mobile, appealing, and SEO-optimized website linked to your social media, email list, and Google My Business. All for one low price and no monthly fees. Why not keep doing what you do best in your business and allow us to handle the tech side? Let's get started. Find us at edgehealthandtech.com. Welcome back to Untold Physio Stories. I'm one of your hosts, Dr. E, with Modern Manual Therapy, Edge Mobility <laughs> System, and our four-month online mentoring program, Modern Rehab Mastery. And my co-host is... Dr. Andrew Rothschild with Modern Patient Education and Re- Modern Rehab Mastery. How's it going today, Andrew? Good, Urson. How are you? Great. I noticed you have a new logo. I do. I, I really made... liked your old one, too. I made it, I made it myself. It does, look very, it does look very similar to the old one. Oh, you made it yourself. Wow. You have a, my new, you, my, you, my new Canva skills. <laughs> oh, Canva. I get it. Nice. Canva pro. That's right. Well, someone might have some side gigs going on. Contact Andrew. If you want, <laughs> if you want a logo, that's more than just an anthropomorphic person running or stretching. If you want a very simple block letter logo, I am your man. <laughs> hey, you know what? Block letters are way more iconic than like I said, the the general non woman, non man, genderless person That's true. that is like you contact uh, someone to make a logo online, and that's the logo you get for your fitness center, your rehab, or whatever, right? Right, right. <laughs> Not iconic and otherwise. <laughs> so, uh, so what you have a story for us today? A couple. I do. Yes. So uh, I can't, I don't think I've told the story before. If I did, it would have been a while ago because the patient, uh, it was a patient I saw several years ago. My daughter's 10 now, so probably would have been at least like four years ago because she was a teacher at my daughter's um, you know, preschool and after school place. Um, and I ended up seeing her for therapy for a little bit. But a current patient kind of reminded me of the story. Um, and with this patient in particular, my, uh, my wife had come home and mentioned that you know, this woman, um, is, you know, she was, a, she was been a dancer, you know, she was in her seventies. Um, but she was having like, you know, bi- you know, bilateral knee pain and, you know, soreness and, you know, was thinking that, you know, should she go see an orthopedist? She thought she might need, or she had, she had seen an orthopedist and was told her, you know, of course the classic, her knee was bone on bone. Um, you know, she might need a knee replacement, but she really wasn't interested in having surgery. You know, is there anything I could do? Talk to her, whatever. And she actually uh, turned out lived right in our neighborhood. Um, so I went, I went over to her house, I think maybe one evening after work or on a Saturday. And I brought my little table and just, you know, just do a quick little assessment, you know, just because she's my, one of my daughter's teachers. Um, and she has like, you know, bilateral genu valgus, um, you know, kind of sort of that, OA looking kind of knee, um, just from a visual situation. And she had a little crepitus, uh, with assessment, but she really had, she had full knee flexion extension, no pain. Um, but when I started do, moving her hip, uh, especially into like, you know, flexion and internal rotation, it was reproducing her knee pain. 
And I said, it was like, well, the good news is, you know, you really do not get knee replacement surgery because um, you don't need to. Your knees are fine. It's like it, it really might be referred pain from your hip. Um, and it's maybe something we can work on and improve. But if, you know, if it doesn't, if it doesn't seem like it's improving enough and, uh, you know, certainly depending on what your quality of life is and function, and then certainly a hip replacement may not be, may not be the worst thing in the world. Um, and so I saw her for therapy uh, in our, in our office for uh, about a month or so. And, you know, got a little better, but it, it was pretty to the point where it was like, you know, probably the best thing I said for you is probably a hip replacement, which she was pretty apprehensive about, but I ended up kind of, kind of convincing her, and she went through it and she did great. And I saw her after surgery and I didn't have to see her that long because she really did so well, just a little bit of mobility and strengthening. And, you know, her knee pain was alleviated um, and she was very happy and very thankful. Um, you know, as far as joint replacements go, the hips usually do very well. Um, but it was one of those ones because I, the patient that I had recently was talking about the same kind of thing, was mentioning about knee pain and this kind of thing. And I was looking at, it, I was like, hey, again, the knee is, your knee is good. It's not, doesn't seem to be, I can produce, I cannot produce symptoms with anything stressing the knee, but stressing other things, especially in the hip was reproducing her knee symptoms. And it's, it was just one of those th things that, you know, unfortunately, if a patient, if a person doesn't know, and they go to a doctor and they're, you know, they have these radiographic findings and the doctor says, yep, because they'll, they'll make that connection then they can, you know, I wonder how many people have had surgeries that maybe not, hopefully not too many, but I'm sure there's plenty out there that have had knee replacement surgery where it wasn't actually the knee. Um, because there's, there's so much, you know, crossover with, with symptoms. It's important. Really, and orthos don't have really the time or, you know, really don't spend as much time doing good, you know, exams uh, like they probably used to do many years ago. Yeah, I mean, you would hope that at some point they would have been taught to at least look one joint up and one joint down. And, you know, before it was it was very early on in my career where I saw so many very similar knee pain patients. Um, and, you know, maybe they were a little bit older and maybe they weren't. Maybe they were just a perfectly normal, like 20 or 30 year old, which made it even more frustrating because to me, you know, coming out of PT school and then immediately doing like a manual therapy residency. I would often see these knees, chronic knee pain, you know, five, 10 years. And I, I just found that the knee had full motion and full strength. And I just thought, what now? Right. You know, <laughs> so I learned to look up and down and then I was pretty much validated because I think somewhere in the early 2000s, they started doing the research that, you know, a lot of knee pain is referred from the hip. So that, that was pretty validating, um, but I just learned to look at it because the knee very often moved very well and there was no, there was no discernible, easy to, you know, fix or address asymmetry. Yeah. I think it just depends. I mean, I think it depends a lot of times on the orthopedist and, you know, I, it's, I don't, you know, don't want to paint them with a broad brush, but you know, when I've when I've spent time with, or, you know, I haven't spent time recently with any orthopedist in their office, but when I did when I was a younger clinician, you know, I was definitely surprised by the lack of physical exam that a lot of them did. Um, and I was actually pleased when I went with my father. My father recently had a hip replacement, and he had been previously diagnosed with spinal stenosis and different things, and they thought it was all spine related. And I did not, I thought it was more hip related and he was still seeing a spine specialist. And again, I don't know if it was because I was there and he knew I was a physical therapist or if that's what he would have done anyway, but he did do a better, you know, a little more thorough exam, moving the hip, moving stuff around. And then, you know, same to the, came to the same conclusion I did. Um, but you would hope a, a orthopedist looking at the knee would move the knee, touch the knee and hopefully move the hip to, you know, to, to, to differentiate, but I'm sure there's plenty out there who don't. And I know a lot of times they're pressed for time. They're encouraged, you know, they're incentivized to do procedures, incentivized to do radiographic stuff. And, they, and a lot of times they base a lot of their clinical decision-making on, you know, patient report of symptoms plus radiographs, which is not, you know, not, really not enough. Yeah. It's sad. I mean, I, I don't know at, at what point, you know, even in our curriculum, how many PT curriculums have pain science education type right. um, as part of their normal orthopedics? And if we don't even have it, you know, you can you can definitely bet that uh, standard orthopedists 
and sports med doctors probably don't have it in their curriculum yeah. to know that um, it's just wrinkles on the inside or gray hairs on the inside. Yeah. And, I, and like you, I don't think I learned about, you know, hip referral to the knee in PT school. I think it was later on during, you know, residency and fellowship that it became, you know, more, more prevalent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But for sure. And I think, um, who was it? Was it you or Sean that just shared um, on our mentors thread about the majority of hip pain improved with only lumbar treatment and not hip treatment? That, yeah, that was an article Sean shared. Yeah. So basically, uh, go one joint up for right. everything. <laughs> and I think that's a general good rule of thumb, too, for, you know, all, all physios listening or, you know, um, is like, yeah, in general, don't get tunnel vision when you're doing an exam or a patient has a complaint of pain. You know, really look at, spend time, at least, at the very least, looking above and below to see what, you know, contributing factors there might be. Um, cause certainly if the primary area of complaint is examination wise is benign, um, definitely start, you know, that's, that's where the ne next, next place to, to look should be. Yeah. One joint up and one joint down is a good rule. And especially for closed chain activities, like I see a lot of gymnasts with elbow issues and they, they mostly have the elbow functions very much like a knee cause they do some right. closed chain things, crossfitters too. If they have a lot of forearm or wrist limitations and shoulder limitations, very rarely does the elbow have a limitation. Right. And um, I've had swimmers with a lot of shoulder pain, but it turns out that they are lacking a th like thoracic or spine extension, you know, so they're just, they're compensating so much uh, in different ways. So yeah, absolutely. For sure. All right. Well, where can people find you? People can find me um, on Instagram mostly at a Rothschild PT and uh, Twitter as well. And also my, my new, uh, sort of uh, personalized uh, content I'm putting out now on Instagram, I'm trying to get creative with, uh, with Canva. Oh, it looks great. I'm resharing it too. So all that stuff, all those great new slideshows that you see on modern patient education <laughs> can thank Andrew for that. I'm not actually doing it. <laughs> More to come. All right. Awesome. Also be sure to check out Andrew and I and our amazing quotes and knowledge bombs along with, a ton of other amazing clinicians that we are not worthy to spend, to uh, share pages with at Movers and Mentors. Um, yes. You can get it in a physical book and uh, like I did on Kindle. So that's Movers and Mentors. There's a ton of PTs and a couple of maybe non-PTs in there like Stu McGill. Um, definitely check it out for some of the, the industry's best minds and uh, their story. And also us. And also us, yes. Andrew and I also have the best to be. Lines, just, and then also us. Yes, we're, we're, we, we are in the book, if, I, if that wasn't clear. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can find me, uh, Dr. E, at Modern Rehab Mastery. That's our new online mentoring program. It includes modern manual therapy, modern patient education, and modern strength training. It's three months with three mentors, so one month with each mentor, four weeks, tons of modules. Lots of CEUs, learn at your own pace for a month, then move on. Um, so go beyond the seminar. You also get chat room um, with your mentees and mentors and live Q&As every week. Check out all my products, Edge Mobility System. We have the new Edge ISTM toolbox that includes the Edge Mobility Star and the OG Edge Mobility Tool. Our Edge Restriction System BFR Cuffs, that's part of Dr. Kyle Coffey's Modern Strike Training BFR Certificate. I uh, hope to see you at a live Eclectic Approach course soon. That's Modern Manual Therapy um, in US, Canada, and South America. And uh, make sure to rate Untold Physio Stories five stars on Apple Podcasts. You could also subscribe on Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. And as always, you guys have an awesome day.